Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your Metal Market Wrap Up for this Monday, the 29th of March, 2021, right at 6 p.m. Central Time. Ugly day in the metal markets. You know, you still don't have the inflation story. You've been fairly flat, actually, on interest rate yields, and there's just nothing there for them. You did pick up a little bit today in the energies, and uh, they did clear out the uh, Suez Canal where traffic can start getting through it. It'll take a long time to clear everything up, but now there's movement there. In the stock market, it's a tale of all different kinds of worlds here. If you're looking at the Russell and the NASDAQ, you have one world. If you're looking at the Dow and the S&P, you got another one. In the dollar index, it is still a strong market versus weak foreign currencies. That, that's pretty much how I'm viewing it. Now you're going to see I'm adding Ethereum today for you. It's got enough data there where I'm going to include it in the gold area and I'm going to keep Bitcoin in the other area for the financial market. So I'm gonna just flip them around a little bit. But as you can see on a weekly area chart of closes, the highest close we've had is 2010. Here we are $300 lower. That's the interesting part of it finally. And we, in term that it's right at $300 lower. And you're staying under the 18 week average of closes. That gives you what? A bearish bias still to the market. When we take a look at the charts, if you'll recall, I've been pointing out that you went sideways, dropped, came up, didn't make higher highs, dropped a bit of sideways. This was a much longer sideways than I expected, and that, that surprised me because I understand the three to five days that it's been doing, but this was much longer than that. So the question is, is it a breakout to the downside? Well, in terms of the swing line, you do have lower highs and lower lows, so that part of the market is bearish. The market fought a battle at the 18-day average of closes and is now broken underneath that whole whole area, the lowest low of that zone that it fought in. So I'm going to call it a downside breakout. You'd have to get back over 1744.80 to tell me that it's anything but that. The downside target, most likely the 1692, uh, 1692.40, the lower Bollinger Band. Now the Bollinger Bands are also doing something. They're just marching sideways now. So they're through with their arcing up and down patterns that you get. When this happens, they're starting to tell you you're getting a trading range developing right through here with downside bias. And when you look at momentum, it's not oversold. So the bears have control until the market close, oh, actually gets over 1721.90. Uh, what the, did I say 1721? I'm sorry, 1744.80. The 1721.90 would mean a close over that takes the downside bias away. Again, my mouth not keeping up with my brain. Lower highs, lower lows, that's still the target. When I come to the gold-silver ratio, as you know, I, and I've pointed this out to you on the weekly charts, if you're a subscriber or you looked on my weekly charts uh, on YouTube, because my I show it in many areas, the weekly chart, the battleground's gonna be the 70 difference. Right now, you're climbing up towards that at 69.19 on the daily chart, so this is what we'll call a how do I phrase this the right way? The longer term trend is down, the shorter term trend, the day trend is up. We'll see what happens when the two come together. Silver did something today that was pretty ugly. If you look, the market had been fighting at the 200 day average, got under it on uh, Friday, on today. I'll take that back, today, remember we're a day ahead now, and it's not getting itself right back over. Uh, if it stays here too long, watch out. You could start just riding that Bollinger Band down. The chart action turned bearish here, too. Now you've got the a confirmation, lower highs, lower uh, lows. What else happened on the chart? Let's come back to right here. The 18-day average is over the 100 in green. Today, the market, Monday, today the market reverse course on that and it's continuing that. So another bearish element is happening in the chart. That's not good. Hard rallies, well, I'll call a hard rally back up into there. The market's gonna now find the 200 day might act as a cap on the market if it tries to bounce right here for a bit. 
when we get to the copper market with today's action, you've reconfirmed the lower high, lower low pattern as well. Again, I'm looking for this market to be stuck in the Bollinger Bands right here from 398.65 up to the 417.40 area. Momentum is flat, trend down, bias down in the market. In order to turn the trend back to the upside, the market needs to take out 408.30. That would do the job. You'd then have, in theory, the higher lows, higher highs, maybe over the 18-day average, could call for a challenge of that number. So what number do you think the bears want to defend? The 18-day average at 408.05. Let's round it. Platinum market, you tell me the battleground number, sideways right through here. You can see you're still dropping in your momentum. In the Palladium market, a huge outside day to the downside. So prior to this, all the metals have been acting to the downside. This has been the standout, and today it gave that up. And as you can see, it's turning down. Look for a challenge of the 18-day average of closes. Should the market on Tuesday or Wednesday get over today's high of 20, uh, 26 87 50 that would be a bear trap and I would think you'd get the quick move to make a challenge of the upper Bollinger Band off of that. Obviously it hasn't done that. The onus is right now on who? Today the market changed itself completely on this chart. So now the bulls got caught today. You got to be careful for them. The dollar index you're up right against the upper Bollinger Band. Why, why is that the case? Because markets trade within the Bollinger Bands 95% of the time. So when you get up to one, it's a resistance. Down to it, it's support. Yes, you can pop over it, but you don't stay there very long. That is the point. It's only 5% of the time. So we're getting in that rarefied air. That does not mean it's bearish. It's still very much an uptrend. What about embedding? So you cannot count uh, Tuesday yet, but we don't have it on the board. We're only at Monday. Both numbers were over 86. Both were over 80 on Friday, not so on Thursday. You need all the numbers over 80 on the closed business Tuesday, and then I'll say it converted from being overbought to locked in. Now here's our Ethereum. I'm going to call it Ether from time to time, okay? Our Ether April contract. And as you can see, a lower low, a higher high. We need a lot more data to come into this, but no trend, at least at this point. Momentum trying to pick up a little bit, bias up. So the market's just sort of waffling back and forth. Not enough history to tell you yet how it works against the upper Bollinger Band, but in theory, it should do the same thing. Only 5% of the time should it stay above or below it. You know, in the mornings at uh, 5.40 in the morning, as you know, I start recording a video for my subscribers. And many of you ask, as I were going to say, if you're watching me on YouTube, where does he say buy? What does he think of gold and silver? What should I do with them? That's where I do it. And the reason is, as a registered broker, friends, I can't just go out onto public forums and do that. If, if you watch what goes on on CNBC, Fox, Bloomberg, there's disclaimers all over the place that you have to put. By the time I'd answer your question, the disclaimer would be so long, it's too difficult. That is why I don't do it there. It's one of the reasons. The other is I want to be paid for that advice. I mean, free is nice, but I want to be paid. Each morning video starts you off with the news from Asia, Europe, and what's going on here. Then I start covering the markets, about 40 some out of them now, uh, in great detail in this exact sequence each and every time. Not expensive. You know, a tick in these markets is typically in the neighborhood of 10 to $12. I charge $7.95 for the first 30 days. This week, my online Bollinger Band course is coming out, and it's an enhanced course. Any paid subscriber gets a $15 discount on it. The retail price will be $75. They're posting everything. I'm done with it. So it's ready to be released. Uh, I'll let you know when. They're testing everything right now. And it could be as soon as tomorrow. So look for an email if you're in my mailing list. If you're not on the list, you might want to go to the website, sign up for a free offer so you are on there. And I'll get that out to you. Otherwise, you can always go to our website, sign up for one of our research products under the word research when you go to the site. 
for sure you'll be getting it. You don't have to put in codes or anything. Our systems will know that you're a paid subscriber. That's how we're going to work this go going forward. I'm I Rapstein. You have a great day. I will talk to you uh, in my next video, the uh, financial market one, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.